This is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the condensation in an air handler. Alright, so let's get into it. So condensation, we're going to start with the formula. Condensation, condensation It's going to be equal to the following. It's going to be equal to the mass flow rate of water which is going to be equal to the mass flow rate of air times the humidity ratios. Humidity ratio 2 minus humidity ratio 1. Okay? So we're going to put in here what is everything. So this is mass flow rate, mass flow rate. Okay? And the other one is going to be the same. This is going to be mass flow rate of air. Here we go. Mass flow rate. Mass flow rate. <clears throat> okay, so what are the units of this? This is going to be pounds, and I'm doing this little by little, okay, so that way we're, be, we're able to understand everything, okay. So this is not going to be the same, this is mass flow rate of water, okay, so that, that I'm going to put that with another color, mass flow rate of water, here we go, water, and this is going to be mass flow rate of air, here we go, see, air, water and then why do we have a dot on top because we're saying about rate when you're talking about rate you're talking about time so when it's time we're gonna we're gonna say this is mass which is pounds rate per minute here we go per minute the other one is gonna be the same see mass which is m rate which is divided by time which is minutes or it could be hours or anything related to time all right so those are the units of the first one okay so when we're talking about calculating the condensation uh, what we, we're trying to be practical and we're trying to obtain the GPMs so in other words how much water goes through this condensate line see right here there is like a condensate line right here see how much water is getting pumped out outside so I need to know how much GPMs are getting through this condensate line. So that's going to be calculated by this formula which is already mass flow rate of water and air and then how do we get GPMs though? We're going to obtain GPMs by obtaining the mass flow rate of water because we're going to obtain the pounds per minute and just we're going to use a conversion factor to transform it to gallons per minute instead of pounds per minute gallons per minute so this is the key let's put since this is the key i start in here so this is the start this is what we need okay uh, the other ones are going to be uh humidity ratios directly okay so this is going to be humidity ratio humidity ratio humidity ratio and the units are going to be pounds per pounds and again, this is going to be pumps, pounds of wet air. Here we go. Pounds of wet air or moist air or water divided by pounds of dry air. So this is wet, this is dry. All right. The other one is going to be the same. The other one is going to be W1 humidity ratio. Humidity ratio. And the units are going to be the uh, pounds of wet air divided by pounds of dry air. Okay, so what's the difference between both? We're going to say that this is living. See? Living. And this is going to be entering. Uh, Actually, this is going to be the following. I'm just going to make a small change in here. Okay. This is going to be actually humidity ratio number two. Entering. Entering. And this is going to be leaving. Leaving. All right. So 
if we if we're going to have all of these variables we're going to be able to calculate how how many gpms gallons per minute of water is are condensated and another part that i want to explain in this video is like why is condensation happening how is water getting into this air handler so what happens is that what we have in here is the air handler and it happens that the air handler has a coil see i'm i'm drive uh, i'm i'm drawing the coil in here in this case it's an eight coil and the coil is very cold actually very cold that to the point that usually the temperature is like 55 degrees or 50 degrees fahrenheit and what we have in here is that the air is coming here very very hot okay so the air is coming at 80 degrees dry bulb and 70 percent relative humidity so the return air is coming from here okay and it's coming at 80 degrees fahrenheit and 50 70 percent relative humidity okay so since this air is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and this is very cold, 75 degrees, that's when condensation occurs because this air, which is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 70% relative humidity is giving me a dew point. Let's put in here dew point DP of 69. And you're going to say like how the dew point is 69 because with two data see with two points with two givens having the 80 degrees fahrenheit and 70 percent relative humidity you are able to obtain all the properties thermodynamic properties of air you are able to get humidity ratios dew point a specific volume you only need to given okay so since we have that how did i obtain how did I obtain dew point of 69? Two ways. The psychrometric chart. You can always go to the psychrometric chart. Psychrometric chart. And there is another video that I made before, all related to how to obtain these properties in a psychrometric chart. Or you can always go online just get a psychrometric an app an app on the phone which is very handy there is a lot of phone a lot of phones i mean a lot of apps on the phone that you you you're gonna all only put like psychrometric chart and there are some that are, you have to pay one dollar other ones twenty dollars there's a lot of variety so it's very handy to have an app in the phone and then you just put these two data and then you obtain this or you can always use the psychrometric chart too all right so the dew point actually is 69 see since the dew point of air is 69 and this dew point is greater is greater than the temperature than 55 degrees then there is condensation condensation see so that's what and how that where is that gonna go that's why we have a condensate line in here condensate land we have a, a condensate pump and this is gonna pump it out outside because maybe there's no drains in here or it's very a tight space so that's why they put the little giant and then it pumps it up all right so now we're going to obtain the gpms which is gallons per minute okay so how do we obtain that what we need in order to obtain that is the following we need mass of air we need humidity ratio humidity ratio okay so let's start with the humidity ratios so what we're gonna do in here is enter what is entering entering conditions entering conditions okay what are the entering conditions the entering conditions are this see the air is coming in at 80 degrees dry bulb 
or Fahrenheit, which is the same, and 70% relative humidity, RH, relative humidity. And then uh, I'm being redundant, but it's very important. When you have two properties, thermodynamic properties, you're able to obtain anything, okay? Every, every property of the air. So in this case, if you input this in your psychrometric chart or your application in your phone, you're going to be able to obtain a W2. See? Entering. So entering is W2. Your humidity ratio is going to be equal to the following, okay? <clears throat> and you can always validate that in... You can always go to Google and there's a lot of resources, okay? So the humidity ratio is going to be 0 0.01.4 and the units pounds of wet air, moist air divided by pounds of dry air, okay? Entering conditions. The other conditions are going to be the living, living conditions, and the living conditions. We have the following. I'm just going to put it in pink because it's better. See, pink. It's more noticeable for some reason. All right. So, the living conditions are based on 54 dry bulb. And 50%, 57 wet bulb. Okay, so if you go to a psychrometric chart, the humidity ratio is going to be equal to 0 0.00831 pounds of wet air divided by, by pounds of dry air. All right, so now we have these two uh, the humidity ratio, humidity ratio entering and leaving. Now we're going to be able to calculate the mass flow rate of air. So what is the mass flow rate of air? Here we go. Let's make this nicer. Here we go. So how do we calculate the mass flow rate of air? Let's put in here MA. Here we go. Calculation. Mass flow rate of air. So in order to calculate the mass flow rate of air, we have the CFM actually. See, this is a two-ton air handler unit. So we're going to go for the rule of thumb, 2 ton times, usually the rule of thumb is 1 ton is 400 CFM, so it goes away. So for a 2 ton you're going to, be, you're going to need 80, 800 CFMs of supplier. There we go, 2 ton, 400 CFM, 1 ton is 400 CFM. All right, so this CFM actually equals to the following. The CFM is equal to cubic feet per minute. There we go. So this is actually volume, and that volume is going to be rate. So it's the airflow rate. So it's volume with that dot right there. Airflow rate. So we're going to convert this airflow rate into mass flow rate. So since you have the CFM, we're going to be able to convert it to CFM. Okay. So one way is to use the density. Density of air is going to be equal to 0 0.075 pounds per cubic feet. But the only problem with this is that this is at standard conditions standard conditions 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 okay but this is not at the standard conditions this is at 80 degrees dry bulb so the density at 80 degrees dry bulb is going to be equal to see the density of air it's going to be equal to 0 0.072 pounds per cubic feet. And then this is at 80 degrees dry bulb or Fahrenheit. There we go. It's not the standard condition, is this. So we, we have to use this. So in order to calculate that, we're going to have 800 cubic feet per minute times 
1 cubic feet is 0 0.072 pounds goes away and this is going to be equal to 57.6 pounds per minute there we go so this is the mass flow rate so now what we have let's check with pink we have this we have this and we have this so we're able to calculate that all right let's do the plug-in chuck okay so then my mass flow rate is going to be equal to mass of air the mass of air is 57.6 times mass of water which is humidity ratio actually 0 0.054 minus 0 0.00831 and we're gonna have in here the mass flow rate is going to be equal to the following okay if you do the calculation in your calculator this is going to give me 0 0.408 pounds per minute all right here we go but now what you need and what is very very handy is the GPM we want to obtain the how many gallons per minute are condensating all right so for that you just need a conversion factor conversion factor that indicates that one gallon of water equals 8.34 pounds of water they go away and finally you have your answer your answer is going to be equal to 0 0.05 gallons per minute which in other words is GPM which since this is mass and this is gallons this is volume we're gonna put this as a V since it's divided by minute rate which is a dot so there we go we're gonna put this in a nice box right there all right so um this is the amount of gallons per minute that we're we're having on this condensate line all right so we're gonna make this a little bit better so everything's in group so this is my main formula condensation gpm this is these are the entering conditions see entering conditions living conditions we calculated the mass airflow rate because we had the CFM based on the tonnage and also we used the density of air at entering conditions see all right and then uh, conversion factors okay well um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did hit the like button and subscribe share and subscribe because that helps the channel also that helps you to obtain more videos about the this item okay well, have a good one.